So whenever we bring someone to the stage, uh, we want that person to make an impact in people's lives. Uh, the next speaker, apart from being the Chief of Technology and Innovation Officer at Accenture, uh, also dedicate, dedicates a good amount of his time in making our industry more inclusive and fair. He's on the board of directors of Girls Who Code and also sponsors uh, Accenture's partnership with Code.org. And Code.org is focused on bringing computer science education to students around the world. So let's all welcome Paul Doherty, Accenture. Good morning. It was a great introduction and uh, tee up for what I'm going to talk about here. And it's great to be with this audience here at Spring One. Uh, I've been a longtime fan of Spring and developer, and uh, part, uh, Pivotal's a great partner of ours at Accenture. And uh, Spring is really, has been and continues to be a real key part of the work we do at Accenture. But I'm going to talk about a little bit of a different theme here today that you see on the screen, which is the human plus machine view that we see taking hold in the future and why that's really important to all of us in the roles that we have, whether you work in uh, technology companies, whether you work in corporations, whether you work in you know, government organizations, why uh, it's, where we're moving to in the future with this human plus machine perspective is a really important thing for all of us to understand. And if you, uh, if you fall asleep during my presentation, I'll give you the key highlight uh, and key takeaway, which is that uh, the plus sign in the, in the slide that you see here, the human plus machine. And what I'll talk about over the next 12 minutes or so is this view that in the world that we're going to in the future, it's an age of increased human potential and increased humanity uh, and human empowerment. And the way we, that we apply technology needs to take that into account. And that's a different view than you sometimes hear. And it's important for all of us as technologists to really understand how to apply this view to make sure we create the right opportunity for people the right, in the right, uh, the right future for the organizations that we, that we represent. And as a tee up to this, you know, think about the relationship that we have already as people with machines. You know, all of you have this device. I'm kind of blinded so I can't see, but I can see a number of you from what I do see already using your phones. And we have this uh, close relationship with technology that's changed dramatically how we as humans think and how we live. There was a recent survey by the Pew Institute, and it said that over two-thirds of, of people, so over two-thirds of you in this room, check your phone as the last thing before you go to sleep and the first thing before you get out of bed, before your feet hit the ground, two-thirds of you. And 3% of you, 3% a self-reported survey admitted to sleeping with their phone in their hand for fear of missing out on something, right? So that's how it's changing our behavior. I'm not going to ask you to self-identify yourself, but that's the degree to which technology is changing us, and that's just the start of what's happening. And when you look at the, the bigger changes, you can see some things that, you know, appearing on the screen that, that, that's the world transforming around us. You see Sophia, the most advanced humanoid robot powered by AI. You see, uh, you know, uh, food production, uh, automated food production using new algorithms and new, new technology. Virtual reality and augmented reality using, being used in shopping and uh, store retail experiences. Micro robotic surgery, quantum computing, uh, biological gene editing with CRISPR in the top uh, center portion of the slide. Uh, vertical farming in, in our urban areas inside with no sunlight that you see on the left-hand side of the slide. Things that are transforming opportunities for, you know, for uh, our organizations and really providing massive potential to improve the way that we operate as communities, as a society, and the way that we uh, create sustainability in the planet. And that's really the potential that we have in front of us with uh, all this new technology. And at the heart of it, uh, we believe, what we see is artificial intelligence. That's the, the, what we call the alpha trend behind everything we saw on that, prior, on that prior slide. And artificial intelligence, we believe, will continue to be the alpha trend. And what we mean by that, it's, it's the trend that will shape many other trends and allow us to do a number of other things. And this is going to be the dominant trend for us for the next you know, one years, two years, three years, five years, 10 years, and probably 20 years as we look at the evolution of artificial intelligence. So it's really important for us to understand you know, the, right, you know, the right way to be applying this at this early stage 
in the adoption of AI, and it really still is the early stage uh, of, of, uh, of AI from that perspective. And uh, so there's a few things I want to share with you that, are, that we've written about further in this book, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the book in a minute, that outlines this human plus machine view. So the first thing is that there's a number of myths about uh, AI that are important to deal with and set aside. You know, there's this view that, uh, that AI is beating us at all our games, like AlphaGo, so it's taking away all our fun. Uh, AI is going to take all of our jobs, so we're not going to you know, have any work to do. And that AI is going to take over the human race. Well, fundamentally, those things just aren't true, other than that it does play some games pretty well. And uh, I'll talk about why that's true. And we need to set aside these myths, because the myths are unfortunately stalling some of the progress that we could be making in terms of really applying AI to create some of this transformative effect. So set aside the myths and let's talk about the reality of what's happening. And there's three imperatives that, uh, that we believe are really important for, uh, for us to be working on and driving into the organizations that we, that we all represent. And I'll, I'll walk through these individually. The first one is this imperative to really reimagine the way that we are, are building our businesses. And we talk in the book and in the work we do at Accenture about this third generation of business process that we need to think about. And we characterize the third generation as needing to reimagine the way we do business. You know, the first generation of work was the automation assembly line, uh, Frederick Taylor, scientific management measurement. That was automation. Re-engineering was the late 90s, early 2000s with uh, the re-engineering techniques, uh, bringing knowledge worker and information systems in for the first time. Those were all st uh, sequential, static ways of building processes and organizations and businesses. And that doesn't work in the AI era we're moving into. We need dynamic, adaptive, flexible organizations, processes, and jobs. And that's what we mean by reimagining the way that we construct our businesses. It's very different. And the organizations that get this right are approaching it very differently. Uh, you can see things, see this happening in areas like we show in this little video on the right-hand side here with digital twin models in industrial, in some, in some of the industrial companies, Siemens, GE, companies like this using virtual digital twin models of uh, whether it be wind turbines or jet engines or manufacturing plants so that using AI, people can interact in real time with real virtual, mo with virtual models of real equipment and uh, understand dynamically, how should they be maintaining the equipment? When might it fail? What's the customized, personalized way to handle that piece of machinery? And we can push decision making more to the front lines of the workers, empower these e the engineers and technicians and workers more, and really transform the way they work, make the work itself more agile and personalized, and drive much greater opportunity for the organizations. That's an example of uh, reimagining business. The second imperative is to really take a new approach to thinking about how we create jobs and how we train people for jobs in organizations. And we call this collaborative intelligence. It's not artificial intelligence where we're just creating new algorithms. It's collaborative intelligence where we put together the algorithms and machines with the capability of humans, leverage humans for what they're good at and machines and algorithms for what they're good at. And what we found here as we did a lot of research for this book and we looked at the work we're doing in our company, that there's really uh, a number of uh, categories of new jobs that we highlight on this, on this uh, graphic here. I'll just show it. The, uh, and there's two main families of jobs. There's jobs where humans are needed to help machines that we're really not yet taking account for in how we develop uh, our organizations and how we think about things. So we need trainers. Not trainers to train people in a traditional way or not, not trainers to tag data as we sometimes think about with machine learning. We need trainers for the behavioral AI that we're developing in chatbots and virtual agents. These are new jobs uh, for people that aren't technology skills. They might be in our organization. We have sociologists uh, uh, and people with very different backgrounds developing the training for chatbots, virtual agents, and these new technologies we're deploying on the front lines of our companies. Because as AI becomes the, front, the face of your company to your consumers, AI becomes your brand, and your brand better, better behave right, and you need these new types of roles to do it. And that's just one small example where you need humans to help AI and machines do the proper things for organizations. And again, millions of jobs in these categories and new roles that we need to be creating. And then the other side of it is where machines help humans and give humans superpowers is the way we say it. You know, AI giving humans superpowers to do new things. And there's a number of categories of jobs there 
A uh, you know, simple example here is work we see in financial services institutions in the back office and compliance areas where you're taking traditional roles of, say, investigators for anti-money laundering, pairing them with machine learning and better pattern detection so that they can be much more effective in finding crime and, you know, and the, the, right, uh, the right offending transactions more quickly, pairing the human with the machine capability. And this idea of the missing middle is that not enough organizations are thinking about how do you train people for these combined opportunities uh, in this collaborative intelligence capability between people and technology. And that's the real call to action that we issue in the book is the need to think about this and begin structuring the work, the training, and the skilling accordingly. And then the, uh, the third imperative is around responsible AI. And those of you that are science fiction fans, there's probably a few in the audience, will recall uh, 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 Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics. The problem is they didn't go far enough in terms of what we need for business. So we've developed you know, the five rules of responsible AI. And I won't go into these in detail, but if you're implementing machine learning, deep learning, uh, convolutional neural networks, or anything like that in your organization, and if you don't have a well-defined code of conduct around these principles in terms of how you apply AI, I'd submit you're going to get yourself into trouble at some point. And having a proactive uh, you know, organizational view on how you're dealing with responsible AI, avoiding bias, allowing explainability, uh, making sure that, uh, that things are uh, developed in a fair and accountable manner are critical things to get right. It's an area uh, that uh, more organizations need to get ahead of as they deploy AI. And then, uh, you know, if, if you get those things right, there's three challenges that we still have, to have ahead of us with AI that are the unresolved challenges. The first is the skills and learning issue that I've alluded to already. We'll have enough jobs going forward for people. We're not worried about that, given what we see, and many other organizations are concluding the same. What we do have an issue with is ensuring that the people displaced or people currently without the right skills are able to get the right skills to do the new job. So we need a call to action around co uh, lifelong learning, new, le new training platforms and companies, new approaches to education to get this right. And it's an obligation of every organization to you know, invest in their employees and view their employees as a, as a renewable resource in a way, powered you know, where the employees have access to lifelong learning to continually adapt to the way their jobs are going to change over the next, uh, over the next number of years. The uh, second point is around data and data veracity. Data is the big challenge here for many organizations. That's a, a big priority. And the third challenge is that AI itself is evolving rapidly. Machine learning's gotten a lot of attention. There's other branches of AI, symbolic learning, knowledge representation, and other, other forms of AI that are coming on the scene that are going to create a continuous, uh, you know, continuous uh, roadmap, so to speak, of new AI technologies that all of us need to deal with and adapt in our organizations. Now, we're here at Spring One. You know, this, this comes together in the way we develop solutions uh, for, for companies. And um, you know, AI is just a part of how we develop solutions for companies. So you know, some of the things we think about when we think about applying human plus machine in the context of what we're talking about here are you know, the, the resurgence and renaissance of custom solutions and technologies and platforms like Spring One to you know, fuel uh, the new types of solutions that companies need to develop, powered by AI, you know, cloud, you know, cloud native solutions, agile, as I've mentioned a number of times, critical in the technology and the architecture, the business process, and the way we structure our companies. And that's why we formed you know, with Accenture, our Accenture Pivotal business group, working with Pivotal and bringing together a lot of our spring and other capability to focus on you know, developing these solutions to power this next generation of opportunity. So that's uh, the quick version of the human plus machine story. The book is out there. I'd encourage you to buy the book. And I'll just direct you to the comment at the bottom there. Because of this issue with reskilling and our, our concern that we're not reskilling people fast enough, we're donating all proceeds of the book to nonprofits and non governmental organizations that are focused on mid career reskilling, because we believe that's the key issue that we need to focus on. And the issue for our generation is getting people in the middle of their careers ready for the next wave of opportunity. And uh, you know, the book's been out for about six months in the US. It's been doing very well, a uh, you know, top-rated book in artificial intelligence with, and uh, thankfully been uh, receiving good reviews. It'll be published in uh, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, German, Russian, Italian, Portuguese, and a number of other languages, and uh, released in those countries in, in the next few months. So I encourage you to take a look at the book if you're interested in these topics, uh, spread the message, and support the types of causes that we talk about here as we really both you know, prepare our organizations for the human plus machine future and do all we can to prepare people for the opportunities ahead.
Thank you very much.